Hello tutorial for Nokia HQ. And today's tutorial, I'm not going to show you how to build any specific feature, but I'm going to talk about an often asked question, which is, is Bubble IO, the web app no code tool, scalable if you have a big application? And um, it's an important question, obviously, to ask because if you're planning to build an application, um, you want to plan for the long term and you don't want um, to yeah, completely rebuild your application once uh, you get lots of users um, and your bubble application starts to uh, yeah, kind of launch off and, and become successful. And I want to address some um, points, give you some tips and tricks and give you an example of one of our apps because um, I or we have a few apps running with lots and lots of users. Um, I just want to show you some actual figures and some data um, to show you what is possible um, and um, yeah, to just um, answer the question if bubble is scalable. So let's just start off and uh, let me uh, give you a few um, yeah, tips and tricks or just general points that I want to address. So first of all, in general, the, or the short answer is yes, bubble apps are scalable, but obviously that will depend a lot on how you build your bubble app. So this is a really, really important um, um, factor. Um, and in most cases from, from developers that I saw, no code developers that were saying, hey, my bubble app is so slow, it's not loading, it's not scalable. Um, it was more their fault the way they built their application rather than the actual platform bubble. Um, because as mentioned, I or we have applications being used by thousands of users every day um, with no issues at all. Um, and uh, that's just the way, because of the way the, the application is built in a fast and, and, and lean way. So let me give you a few um, tips and tricks on how to do that. So first of all, the database structure, I'm just gonna write these down here on the, on the page. Make sure to have a clean and um, efficient database structure for your bubble app. Um, what I or we usually do is, or what I used to do is I just jumped in when building a new application, um, just quickly created data types and just wanted to start building quickly, quickly, quickly. But usually if you once, once you have a database structure defined, you're not gonna change that in the, in the, in the future because it will be really, um, yeah, will, will be really hard to um, change all your existing workflows and to make changes in a database structure once you have an app up and running. So really sit down before building your app, think about, okay, what is the easiest and leanest way I can um, visualize um, the data I want to visualize in our database or in my database, okay? Um, try to keep it as simple as possible um, and try not to create too many data types with too many um, basically connections between data types because there's usually many ways to solve one specific data visualization. Um, lots of different ways you could do that, but it's always best to go off the easiest and simplest way because once you have a lot of data and a lot of connections and repeating groups within repeating groups, this is when things will become slow um, and just not, not scalable in, in that sense. So um, keep that in mind, definitely. And speaking of this, um, there are really simple things that you can do to make sure that your bubble application isn't slow or doesn't have super long page loading times. There are simple things like um, the repeating group structure or the general way you get data from your bubble database because this is often a big bottleneck. Um, obviously, if we have a repeating group here, let's just drag it onto the page. There are different uh, layout styles here and the layout style you choose is really, really important and makes a big difference. If you choose full list, which might seem interesting at first, because let's say you have only 20 items, uh, you're just starting off, full list means Bubble will completely load the list or the complete data entry and will populate the whole repeating group at once. Again, if you have five items only in your database, that's no problem. But once your app starts growing and you start getting more and more data entries and you get to a point where there's thousands, tens or th of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of data entries and you have a full list being loaded, well, obviously this will take a long time, a couple of seconds, even longer than 10, 20 seconds as possible if you have a huge, huge database. So really make sure that you choose layout styles which make sense, which are lean, uh, or even use a fixed number of cells and then do something like adding a button here uh, which says uh, next, okay, next page. And then you can uh, add workflows and say, all right, so when this is pressed, I want to display the next list in a repeating group. This is a really lenient way because in this page you would only, let's say, fixed number of cells, you would only show four data entries that loads really fast. 
uh, and when a user clicks on next page, the next entry will be loaded and this will keep your, um, your repeating really lean and fast. And also um, is probably logical, but repeating groups within repeating groups is obviously a huge um, bottleneck. Um, which doesn't mean you shouldn't use it, but be really careful with it. So what do I mean? Let's say, for example, you have your users and each user has a list of things, which is just call it uh, example. OK, field type is text and it is a list of things. So what is obviously possible? You could have a repeating group here of type of content user. OK, and then within each repeating group. So for each user, you will have another repeating group inside the repeating group, which will be a list of text, which will be the current sales user examples. OK. So what we have here now is all the users being loaded and then within all these users, the list of their these text examples. Obviously, you could go even deeper. You could have another layer of repeating groups inside the repeating group here if there would be a sub um, data type. Um, and obviously, you kind of exponentially increase the load on your database, um, on the page loading time when having nested repeating groups. So really, really be careful with that. Um, if possible, avoid it. It's not always possible, but um, uh, be aware that this really takes away um, performance. All right, then another um, um, big tip, um, which is uh, one of my personal big tips that I would recommend. Um, I, I think some people um, might not 100% agree, but what I was, would always recommend, if you, especially if you're building a modern web app, and this won't work for all kinds of applications, but instead of having lots of different pages and then having workflows which change the page which will always be a bit slower because obviously you will have to switch the page load the url and all the things on, on the new page have to be loaded instead of doing this if it's possible and we have lots of tutorials covering that just have various groups on on your page okay with conditional visibility and then kind of having maybe a menu at the side okay like, uh, let's just have an example here. So I have home maybe, um, so like a nice uh, web app here, home, and we have, I don't know, list, okay? Having different groups on your page will make things much, much faster. So I can have group, group A, I'm gonna call it home. I'm gonna add a conditional when, um, let's for example say, let's add a state here. Let's, let's wrap these into a group, okay? Uh, let's call that menu, and menu should have a state. And the state of menu should be called, it's just called item. And the VD default value should be home. And then we can say, all right, so when menus um, item is home, this group should be visible. Let's just have, I don't know, let's just have a shape here just to see it. Um, and let's copy this group and have a second group. And this should be called list. And this should be visible when menus item is list. And then the last thing we have to add Let's add something else here, maybe, I don't know, a big icon, okay. And then we're gonna say, all right, so when this icon here is pressed, we wanna set the state of our menu to home. And when this is pressed, we wanna set the state, let me just copy this here, of menu to list, okay. And now if we preview that, um, just to maybe show you again, we have these two groups which are hidden, which are however immediately loaded on page load and it only has to be loaded once, then allowing you to have a super fast switch between these two groups. So now we're in our default group home. You can see that from the rectangle. I can switch to list. You can see immediately the icon is being displayed. I can switch back to home, etc., etc. We have um, an application live right now, which actually has 60 hidden groups on the on one page and this is where the whole application is working it's a web app and we regularly get emails from users saying wow your app is so fast it's really fun to use and it's built on bubble and it's running on the personal plan as of now um, and the, the page basically the web app page just has to load once this might take a few seconds two to three seconds but then once it's loaded it's loaded and it's done and then users can switch super fast between their individual uh, groups which have different functionality instead of um, clicking on an icon which will then mean the whole page will have to be reloaded because you go to a new page etc etc again might not work for all applications if you build something i don't know like airbnb or if uh, seo is really important um, 
might not work or not recommended, but for many web apps, especially if it's like a software as a service, you have like a landing page and then you have the actual web app or dashboard somewhere else, um, highly recommended, makes it super fast and um, we're having, we're, we have never had really any issues. So um, yeah. Um, and then one last thing I want to discuss, obviously, is here these app plans. Um, you always have the possibility to increase um, or change to a different plan and get more capacity. So that's just a general question. Um, if you um, if you see your application uh, yeah, growing and growing, you can always allow Bubble to scale accordingly. And even if you're at the highest plan, what you can always do is get a dedicated instance. We actually had one for a while. Um, and there you um, basically have your own server um, and even you can even upgrade that server, choose which CPU you want to have, how many um, storage, etc., etc. So Bubble gives you a lot of uh, ways to scale uh, um, appropriately if you see your Bubble application is getting towards its limits. Speaking of limits, let me give you one specific example. I can't show you the way this um, Bubble app is built because that's confidential, unfortunately, but I can just show you, you can see that's Bubble application here right now, and I'm right now in the capacity, okay? So the server capacity usage, and let's just have that here three months ago. So let's see the data for three months ago. Let's make it longer. Let's make six months ago until now, okay? So let's wait until Bubble loads that. Um, and just to tell you, this app here is running on um, the personal plan from Bubble. Okay, so you can already see peers where the app hit maximum capacity. It's almost non-visible, um, 0.541%. Uh, so you can see nothing. Average CPU usage, it doesn't really barely go above 5%. So um, almost no really load. Duration where the app hit its maximum capacity. In the last six months, it was 160 minutes. Obviously, honestly, I think that's, uh, that's um, not too bad. Um, that's uh, workable with. If you see, just to see what, what kind of application we're dealing with here, um, at its peak time, this application had um, yeah 60,000 page views. Um, it's less now, but it's still a lot. Um, it gets um, yeah a few thousand page views a day. And it's not just a static blog or something like this. This is with user accounts, creating database things, saving things, creating PDF uh, um, files, etc., etc. So it's it's not a complex app, but it's an app with real functionality. It's a real web app uh, used by a lot of users. Um, as you can see, also the number of workflows run, so it's not static. We have 35,000 workflows run here in this time period. Um, and there's no issues with any capacity um, and it runs on the personal plan. There's no reason for me to upgrade right now. Um, and I'm super happy. Obviously, it's built in a lenient and um, fast way. But just to show you what is possible, um, I have another, or we have another application which also really um, has lots, lots of users, runs on the professional plan, and there have been no issues whatsoever. Um, this application was even uh, kind of within a TV show in Germany, um, which had a huge spike in users on the night the television show was aired. Again, no issues at all. Um, we upgraded the capacity before and we're super happy. So just to answer your questions, maybe take away some of your fears. Um, I can tell you from what I've experienced or what we've experienced. Um, yes, Bubble is scalable. Um, and then obviously, if your Bubble application goes to not 60,000 page views, but 6 million page views a day, well, maybe then, I can say for sure, maybe then um, you might get some issues. But if you get 60 million page views, um, I would say money is no more problem. You can hire 10 developers and just build it custom. So until you reach this point, which is hard to reach, but I hope that for you, um, really go with Bubble. This is my recommendation. Um, it's been in a, built in a lenient way and um, you should be good to go. So thanks for watching um, and I'm going to see you guys for the next tutorial of NoCoHQ. Bye.